Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's bring in editor-in-chief of the Daily Wire and Breitbart's former editor-at-large, Ben Shapiro, and host of CNN's Reliable Sources, Brian Stelcher. Welcome to both of Good you. Good morning. Good morning. Ben, ben I want to start with you. Um, Steve Bannon's comments. First of all, your, your initial thoughts. Well, I mean, I think that Steve's, first of all, I think you actually quote Steve completely. So when you say that he says the media should shut up, what he actually said is the media should shut up and listen more to the American people so that they can get better at their job was essentially trying to say, uh, look, I'm not, as everyone knows, I'm not a big Steve Bannon defender. I'm not, I'm not a big Steve Bannon fan. He's one of the worst people I personally know, but that has nothing to do with what he's saying here. I think that what he's actually saying here is not entirely incorrect. There is a vast gap between the media's perception of itself and the public perception of the media. The reason Trump keeps picking fights with the media is because it's a fight he can win. The American people don't actually trust the media at this point, mainly because the media seem like they're representing their own interests. We're like a separate class, as opposed to people who are defending the interests of the American people. And the more we get into slap fights with the administration, the more we get into slap fights with politicians on behalf of the press, on behalf of the media, instead of on behalf of the American people, the more the American people are going to be likely to just ignore it. The no, more they're I, just going to say, okay, it's another I understand, fight, right? I understand where you're coming from, and, and I understand there's a lack of trust in media, but people are certainly watching us, Brian, because if you add up the numbers of CBS, NBC, ABC, and CNN, there are millions of viewers, right? Yeah, this is just the data for the nightly newscast. I tried to pick 6.30 p.m. because it's the best way to show who's tuning in every night. This is NBC, ABC, CBS, plus CNN at that hour, about 27 million on an average night uh, last week. Now, that's a snapshot in time, right? Not everybody tunes in every day. Over time, most of the country is still paying attention to these traditional media outlets, as well as new digital outlets, like the one Ben's at, uh, like the Huffington Post and the BuzzFeeds and the Daily Callers of the world. You know, there's a very complicated media ecosystem out there now. Uh, and I think, you know, we hear Trump kind of attacking the media in general, but there is no one media and there is no one American people. Uh, many, many Americans are... Uh, demanding that the press fact check the new president but at the same time many Americans are skeptical of the press you know it's a very complicated well, situation let me, let me put this by you Ben um, if, if a media entity is a cheerleader for Donald Trump and never puts his feet to the fire won't you lose the trust of the American public too if you continue to do that consistently I certainly would hope so I certainly would hope so I mean I think that here's the thing Every White House treats opposing media as the opposition. The Trump White House, I think, rightly looks at a lot of the mainstream media and says, you guys were the opposition during the campaign. You're still the opposition now. You don't particularly like me. And so you're going to be much more critical of me than friendly outlets like Fox News, for example. But the, the job of the media should be to understand that we're always the opposition. If we're the fourth estate and it's our job to check the government and it's our job to check the White House, it shouldn't matter whether you like or dislike the person in the White House particularly. You should be treating the White House as your opposition. The fact that the media did not treat President Obama as much as the opposition as they are President Trump is giving Trump the opening to slap you guys around. And I think that he's largely correct in slapping the media around by saying that there is a bias that exists for Trump that didn't exist for Obama. The best way to respond to that for the media is not to defend ourselves by saying, well, that's an attack on the press. That's an attack on the media. It's to say, OK, look, say what you're going to say. It's either true or it's false. And then treat it as a true false statement as opposed to a fight between the media and Donald Trump because he's going to win that fight every time at least in the minds of the public. Well, uh, well, the trucker from Michigan does not care if I the understand media gets what you're back. saying, but but here's the difficulty for us, Brian, and I think you'll agree. When when there is a blatant untruth told by President Trump, for example, the crowd size at the inauguration, should we not call him out on that and ignore it because it doesn't really matter or in calling it out, does it make us seem like we're opposing him in some way, since we're not giving him the benefit of the doubt for something really inconsequential? Right, you're making it sound like a no-win situation, but I think the majority of Americans want us to be showing the evidence, showing the photos in that case, showing the video, and letting the facts stand wherever they may be. This is a president who has a 36% approval rating, according to Quinnipiac, 40% according to CNN's poll before the inauguration. This is not a president that the majority of the country uh, wants to only hear positive news. Yes, there are some viewers who only want to hear the positive. Uh, that is actually a minority, and I think we need to keep in mind there are many different constituencies, many different audiences that want different kinds of news right now in this very divided America. Okay, interesting topic. Thanks to both of you for stopping by. Ben Shapiro, Brian Stelter.